Okay, I think one of the probably easiest places to start with like talking about tech is the Apple Watch. Mm -hmm. The watch, anytime, first of all, you see any messaging from Apple about the watch, there's always something health related in it. Yeah. And it was fascinating the way it started because Apple kind of didn't know what the Apple Watch was gonna be. It was an iPhone accessory, but then, I don't know, will you like send a digital heartbeat to your friend or will you like answer messages or get notifications? And we threw in some fitness features and then the world kind of figured it out and it just turned into fitness and notifications. Yeah. And so every single update to the Apple Watch adds some fitness or health thing mm -hmm. and they have to find a way to sell it to the public. And it gets increasingly more and more like, if you don't have this, you might miss that heart irregularity yes. that you have. And this has saved X lives so far. And here's a, a letter somebody wrote from the hospital about how it saved their life. Is this uh, okay with you? <laughs> it seems like a pretty wild uh, way to get people to get something they probably don't need. I don't want to isolate the Apple Watch in this. Sure. I think as mm -hmm. the tech industry, I think what's happening is they've seen the value that health data has. And increasingly the healthcare tech industry is, and even the healthcare industry as a whole is being run as a hedge fund. And to me, that's where I draw the line. Hmm. Because for example, if I tell you I created, uh, let's say I'm gonna use this water bottle here. Mm -hmm. Let's say I created a grip for a water bottle that makes it less likely that it'll slip out of my hands, but I haven't done the research to prove that that's the case. Are you gonna be mad about the fact that I'm saying that it doesn't slip out of your hand? Not really. Right, who cares? Seems logical. But now what if I say the water that I've created inside here cures your depression, but I haven't yet tested it? It's kind of a stretch. That's the problem with our current healthcare tech, healthcare hedge fund industry. Okay. No one is actually going that mile to prove that something works because that's really expensive. And a lot of times will backfire because it proves that it doesn't work. And now you've killed your beautiful product. I see. Yeah, I remember the uh, electrocardiogram coming to the Apple mm -hmm. Watch. And the entire time I'm watching this, I'm like, I'm gonna have to review this watch and I'm gonna test it. And I have no idea how to tell if the ECG I get from this watch is good <laughs> or bad or if it worked or didn't work, but it'll be the first time I ever do an ECG myself. So I guess that's kind of cool. Mm -hmm. I don't know how to. Well, I just don't know that. what to do with it, to yeah. be honest, as a doctor. And most doctors don't know what to do with it because, like, the most common use example of uh, the features on the Apple Watch is that it'll tell you your heart rate's high. Uh, there's a potential risk that you have atrial fibrillation, right. which is when your heart beats irregularly at an irregular rate. I meant to show you this. Oh, did you have some? I got, well, I started getting these uh, PVCs. These. A couple nights ago, ah, see that okay. low heart rate, and it just. This is Marquez's athletic flex right here yeah, about how we're and that's, over. That's because you're a fitness hype beast. <laughs> so I guess it's weird though because <laughs> it's notifying me of some health thing, and I'm like, is this good, bad? Yeah. I don't know. Sometimes you get a high heart rate notification. There's all kinds of things. Do people ever go to you saying, "Hey, yes. my watch told me something"? Is it ever useful? No joke. What's today? Today is Friday. Yesterday, I was in the office. Mm -hmm. A uh, gentleman comes in who has a history of SVT, which is a, a type of fast heart rhythm that exists. Mm -hmm. And he said that after that happened to him once, he got an Apple Watch to start tracking when this happens. Mm -hmm. But here's the interesting part. He knows when it's happening. He can feel it. He can feel the palpitations. He has the skills and the techniques necessary how to shut it down. And it happens very rarely, but he still got the Apple Watch. Yeah. Now the Apple Watch started warning him after he played squash that he would have high heart rates yeah. and he started getting anxious. And then he started getting worse oh. outcomes with his heart oh, rhythms. No. So you see how the tech is fire. It works, it tracks yeah. things. But what we do with that information is really problematic because until we get some guidance and we gather enough data to actually make use of it, mm -hmm. more data just means more health anxiety, more weird interventions that we don't even know if they work or not. Yeah, the magic really is in when the watch notifies you and specifically how it sort of gives you and displays the information in a way yep. that's useful. Yeah. Because it can it can measure all at once, but it's not necessarily like if you go through the health app and scroll for a while, there's tons of stuff. Your breath rate, your like heart rate over time and all these different things. VO2 max, somehow it knows. And I just don't know what to do with that information. I think it's entertainment purposes only for now. The 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 one feature on the Apple Watch that I think is really exciting is the fall notification feature. Yes. 
And you, you have that. a story of it going no, off I, on a roller coaster. No, no, not a roller. <laughs> that's a that's one that's happened to a lot of people. Actually, oh, car okay. crash detection oh, okay. is the one on the roller coaster. Oh, okay. um, but I'll be running around during a frisbee practice and chasing somebody around a field long enough. You'll like stumble and you'll get a little vibration. And says, "Are you okay? Did you fall? Did you need me to call SOS?" See, that's the cool feature. It's kind of a flex though, because if you made someone fall hard enough that they get the Apple Watch <laughs> notification, that's I've never fire. thought of it. You break someone's ankles hard yeah. enough that they uh, their watch is like, "Are you good, bro?" Like, yeah. I'm good. Yeah, yeah there's a I, lot. I feel like the we keep saying Apple Watch because it's the one that yeah. seems to plug it in the most. But like obviously Pixel, Garmin, Samsung, they're all doing it. And it feels like they all started focusing on like health and fitness activity tracking mm -hmm. first. Um, and now they seem to have gone into more of these like AFib, VO2 max, like uh, fall detection, more things that feel like past I'm trying to live an active health style and more like. I'm warning you about your regular health style. Um, I kind of wanted to go over, like, can we split that into two? Yeah. Maybe from what you said already, it seems like a lot of it seems kind of nonsensical. But if we can, uh, not nonsensical. But, I, I think it's but, less useful. Okay. And every time we weigh any kind of medical intervention, mm -hmm. we weigh risk benefit, right? Sure. So if I prescribe a surgery, a medication, everything has risk benefits. Mm -hmm. In fact, if something doesn't have a risk, that means it probably doesn't even work anyway. Because it has Fair. to have the opposite effect if it does something. Yeah. So with this Apple Watch, what I feel like is happening, we're getting data, very limited benefit of what we can do with said data, but definite harms that I'm seeing as a result of health-related anxiety that's being fueled yeah. by all these alarms. Interesting. So that's how I make my decisions. It's very simplified. Yeah. Do you use any type of trackers yourself? So for example, I used to wear an Apple Watch myself and mm -hmm. I remember watching a UFC fight mm -hmm. <laughs> and I guess because I've heart been rate. in the ring. Yeah, I got an mm -hmm. alert for the first time that yeah. your heart rate's been elevated for an extended period of time while wow. sedentary. So I was like, while watching it, yeah, right? yeah, that happened to me in hockey playoffs this See? year. I was like, getting, I was just like, <laughs> like just but so you know, you're anxious. That I just guess so makes you know. sense. Yes, exactly. You know that's happening though, so it's easy to dismiss that. I yeah. guess like for abnormal heart rate and stuff, it's more of the times where you're not quite feeling it, and you get that. Um, you said you've already had it. Do you think is stuff like that? How much is that affecting you guys in the medical field of just getting calls and patients who are mm -hmm. like you said, anxiety specifically? My watch told me this. Okay, so now we're kind of talking about the anxiety and the non-health important, I guess, okay. vital disease notifications, mm -hmm. like random, like ha fast heart rate, all that. Mm -hmm. But now let's talk about the atrial fibrillation notification, because that's the one that could actually have healthcare implications. Mm -hmm. We have no idea what to do with it in the healthcare setting okay. when you get a random alert like that. Mm -hmm. Yes, we can put on a halter monitor and monitor you for seven days, which is a little thing you wear on your chest. It monitors it. If you have symptoms like palpitations, you could notify it. So when we re read it back, we can go back to the time where you press it, you had symptoms. Yep. Because a lot of times patients will have some sort of electrical irregularity in their heart, feel it, but then we didn't do the EKG when that was going on, so we yeah. don't know what's going on. So the halter allows us to do that. But in general, when we have atrial fibrillation, we have rules of how we decide to treat it. How often is it happening? We have scoring systems that we use based on the patient's age, uh, their other medical history, like little factors. But if it happens very, very rarely, and the person's otherwise healthy with no medical history, which is most of the time what happens when mm -hmm. we get these calls, yeah. what we do with it, we don't have good evidence to yeah. decide. Mm -hmm. Maybe we put the halter monitor on, but then it doesn't catch anything. Right. Then the Apple Watch two weeks later catches something again. We still don't know what to do. Yeah, I feel like there's the in the keynote, there's a classic example of like, I got this notification, I thought it was kind of weird. I went to a doctor, the doctor confirmed it, this thing saved my life. Yeah. And the, the, the fitness things that we wear have such scale. There's so many of them out there that inevitably there's a couple of those stories that are real. And then when those stories are the display for like whether or not you should get the thing, it makes it feel like this is something everyone should be looking yeah. out for. Yeah, it's, it's a very manipulative marketing tool mm -hmm. because look, I, I can say right now, let me give you a CAT scan every day for the next 20 years and I might be able to catch a cancer mm -hmm. and we might be able to intervene. But what I'm not telling you is that I'm also going to be radiating your body, probably producing all sorts of cancers That's at the fact. same time. Yeah. So there's there's a healthy balance that has to exist when it comes to healthcare tech, where it's like we tell people what it's possible to accomplish, mm -hmm. but then we have to be honest with the drawbacks. Otherwise, it gets into shady territory. Yeah. Do you think there's any type of, and if like the doctor community has discussed this before, but 
there's some people who say like, obviously all these numbers aren't very accurate, but if you follow trends based on numbers that you're getting on things, is, is there like a, a best practice of potentially using these to actually not just increase healthy lifestyle, but also potentially see some sort of health? The health app does show trends. Trends, but even just like you reading stuff. things yourself. Like, yeah. I mean, I get a heart rate variance every morning when I wake up and like, that's something when I first saw it, I research it and then I'm scared. Like you said, I, yeah. I'm exactly who you're talking about with health anxiety, looking stuff up online. Sometimes I think this really helps me. Yeah. Sometimes I think this sends me into a bit of a spiral and yeah. I don't love it. So that. like, for example, resting heart rate. The lower the resting heart rate, generally speaking, the healthier person is, mm -hmm. right? Because that usually means they're in great shape. This is why this guy over here sits at a 40 heart rate going <laughs> to sleep. Um, but if you are at a resting heart rate of 75, that's considered normal, you're healthy. And let's say you start exercising and you start lowering that. The Apple Watch will show that trend over the course of the month. Yeah. But you tracking that number is purely for is purely for entertainment. Okay. Because if I, as a doctor, encourage you to work out and you start working out, I don't need the Apple Watch to tell me that your resting heart rate's gonna go down. Yeah. That yeah. that's the only yeah. time that's really important is if you're an athlete professionally and you're trying to go from 99th percentile of success to 99.5, which the huge majority of the general yeah. public is not needing these tools. Yeah. But again, for entertainment, for motivation, fine, I'm with it. Especially this tech can evolve and really will become good. I think the future is bright. I don't want to like poo-poo the whole industry. Yeah. I just think the way that they're selling it now is premature. Yeah. It kind of reminds me of uh, like we were talking to the CEO of Rivian where – a lot of people will get like this hundred thousand dollar truck and will never use anywhere near the capabilities of the truck <laughs> but the tech and the capabilities are so good that it's like once in a while when someone maximizes its use it's kind of amazing yeah. uh kind of reminds me of like yeah most people aren't trying to get from the 99 to 99 and a half percentile yeah. but the people who are might find this watch amazing like exactly the, the new ultra has got this like trail climbing mode and all these other things that are like super super useful but generally, for most of us, we're just kind of like, oh, neat. I should probably be okay. And <laughs> well, it's the that. same thing with like protein, creatine supplements. Like mm. you could take these, but if you're an average person, and I, I mean average even to like a higher degree, like yeah, yeah. if you fall within 90% of people who exercise, mm. if you just focus on a healthy diet and focus on the routines you're doing, the supplements are going to maybe add 5% of improvement. And again, that's for people who are competing. The average person, people who go to GNC and vitamin shop and all these and get these things, you're doing it for fun. Yeah, <laughs> you're it's not really yeah. changing much. That's fair. Yeah, that's super fair. I do like I I like how you use the term entertainment. I guess it's not something we've thought about much, but like entertainment doesn't necessarily mean bad thing. Like no. entertainment is a motivator as well. And like I I pers I used to play frisbee with Marquez. I had four knee surgeries and then had to <laughs> quit that eventually and found my activity like way way down. Like some minor things. And then I borrowed an Apple Watch here once and those competitions they do are like one of the most things ever. Gamifying I, I, fitness. Yes. It's like that has super helped me get into like a way, way more active lifestyle. And, and that is amazing. But yes, on the other hand, like what you're saying, like if you're not in that potentially professional athlete aspect of things, like these things are just like, you can look and be like, okay, cool. I did it today. I knew that already, but it's nice to just see it on my wrist. Just yeah. to, I guess. There's the same way I'm like addicted to like checking the checkbox. Like <laughs> yeah. closing the ring is like, yes, that's the satisfying thing. Look, that's the strong part of this app and yeah. the, these tools and the motivation of it is exciting. And I want people to make use yeah. of it. In, in fact, when I made like one of my first videos on YouTube, it was about how to get fit for summer. It was like, get some new workout gear as a Kickstarter to your motivation. The one thing that I'll say is because I'm, again, very research based. When you look at research and you see these initial boosts of motivation by getting new gear, by getting a tracker, long term, they don't make a difference. Right. You got to have a routine right. and get into something. It's, it's a lifestyle change. Or you just need to keep buying things, which yeah. I've, I've fallen into new that gear. whole way too many <laughs> times. New, yeah. gear. new hobby, yeah. new <laughs> shoes, new everything. Yeah. yeah. All right. I asked uh, ChatGPT uh, for a joke about a doctor named Mike. <laughs> oh, so this is what it wrote. Oh, no. Why did everyone at the hospital want to hang out with Dr. Mike? <laughs> because they were sick? I don't know. Because whenever he was around, they knew there was always a microscope.
That is so bad. I can't believe you had that ready to go on the board. <laughs> yes. That's so bad. So this is why uh, humans are still going to own comedy for a little while. ChatGPT, not so great at that one. But hey, if you enjoyed this uh, clip, <clears throat> maybe uh, leave a like or a thumbs up. or a... You should leave a thumbs down for Just, that joke. No, uh, not for the... For the co- why don't Fine. skeletons fight each other? Why don't skeletons fight each other? Why? Because they don't have the guts. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> end it. <laughs> end, end it now. <laughs>